My name is Leanne McNulty. I'm originally from Ireland. I did some volunteer work in Cambodia and Thailand in 2008 and 9 on my way out to Australia. And then when I was in Australia, I worked for uh, in the street fundraising for a, an organization called Plan International. So that was where I got most of my experience before I came to Taiwan and before I went to Vietnam. Um, <clears throat> I met some people in Cambodia that have their own NGOs. Some of them are social workers. Um, some of them work in education. So setting up those contacts has been really helpful and actually some of them I still email them all the time and ask for advice about um, jobs that I can get and what do they think about this and reading their blogs has been really helpful. Um, in Australia, fundraising, I learned a lot about how the really big NGOs work. Um, I saw the small ones in, in, in Vietnam and Cambodia firsthand, but I learned a lot about how the big ones work. And they do spend a huge amount of money on advertising, um, but because it gets, it earns them a huge amount of money in, in, in return for that. So I feel like I got some good experience there. Um, and also just fundraising in the street, it's maybe not the best job to do. It's maybe not the most effective way that uh, an organization can raise money either. But I feel like talking to people and hearing their objections about why they don't want to donate money. And you know, you talk to like 150 people a day. So that was a really good experience. I learned a lot about people's preconceived notions, what makes them feel nervous about donating money, stuff that they've heard that might've been true or might've not been true. Um, and just most of them expressed a desire to do something rather than donate money. They, a lot of them were like, oh, I'd rather just go and do something. Um, which is great, I think. It's really good. It's a good attitude to have. Um, I mean, if you can donate money, that always helps. But to be able to use your skills to help is free for everybody. And you're also passing on skills, which is even better. I got involved with Harmony Home um, after about my second year here. I just wanted to do, I got a couple of my friends fundraise and volunteer with the animal rescue centers here. And so I was just curious to see what else would be available, what else people were looking for. Um, and I found out about Harmony Home online, I think on Formosa, um, and contacted them to see what, what they would need in a volunteer. Harmony Home is an association uh, based in Xing Yi, but they have a couple of different branches, uh, mostly for uh, women and children affected uh, by HIV. Uh, so right now in Xing Yi, they have a center for women and children which has about 40 kids and around 14 or 15 uh, nannies or women that are staying there. Some from the Philippines, some from Indonesia. Some of them have HIV and some do not. Some of them have uh, other issues, uh, but it's kind of like a halfway house. So for the adults, um, they help them get some vocational training um, and help them to get proper papers because some of them don't have the right papers to help them go home or um, just to help them, out of, help them out of the situation that they're in. With the kids, um, some of them do still have contact with their parents um, and some of them don't. Uh, so some of them get visitations and they get to go out sometimes. Some of them stay there full time. Uh, a lot of them have minor health issues um, and a couple of them have pretty severe uh, health issues as well. So um, they take care of that. They take them to hospital appointments. Um, and uh, and when they get to the about 15 or 16, they help them to get some vocational training and maybe get an apartment somewhere as well and start to um, just start to look after themselves a little bit better and uh, stand on their own two feet. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, I think, actually up to 18 are still in the in, in Harmony Home apartments. Uh, so they're being helped out, but they also have their own jobs or sometimes they go to night school and stuff like that. Originally, I started as an English teacher, but then when my schedule changed, it got a little bit harder, so I was looking for other ways that I could help out. Um, fundraising was uh, one of the most important things, because um, obviously they always need funds. So I did a couple of different events for that, and also organized some days out for the kids. Uh, we went to the park, we went swimming, just a couple of different things like that. Um, and also helped recruit some new volunteers. Here in Taiwan, I'm one of the only foreign volunteers. Well, there's lots of volunteers, but um, all the main staff are all Taiwanese. Um, and so they're the ones that are 
doing all the hard work and pulling on the strings i just coordinate with them if i want to do something or have an idea about something that i'd like to do i would always go through them first and they can say yeah that's cool we'd like to do that or no um, so i think it's very important to be careful um, especially western and eastern cultures are, can be very different and it's really important to uh, <clears throat> make sure that you're aware of that um, just like what's considered polite or impolite that's a big thing that we get crossed over and just um, you know uh, religion or uh, just cultural differences in general the best way to deal with an argument for example but I think um, living in Taiwan and working here you sort of learn that skill through your schools as well like you to your your own job um, how to you know deal with any bit of conflict so I haven't really had too many problems um, at Harmony Home. The only issue that I had in the beginning was just uh, the language barrier was the biggest thing. Um, but I asked my Chinese teacher for a couple of phrases that I used to need to use like where's the key, how do I get in, how many kids do I have today, that kind of thing. And once the, the staff there realized that I was making an effort to speak Chinese, they would make more of an effort to speak a little bit of English as well and just became more, just more warm. They know that you're not just coming in speaking English and ignoring them, like that you're considering that they're there and you're asking their opinion and, you know, just uh, trying to fit in better rather than just be like on top telling them what to do. A couple of Taiwanese people, they hear that I, I'm working with kids uh, because I often do collections for toys and books and stuff at my school. Um, and now that a lot of people know that I do it, I get calls all the time to say, oh, I've got a laptop, like, I don't know what to do with it, do you think Harmony Home could use it, that kind of stuff, which is really cool. But when they ask for more information and I tell them that some people have HIV, they get a little bit nervous. Uh, they're not sure if they want to be involved and they sort of stop asking questions. So um, that's at the point where they try and try and fill them in and be like, oh, it's fine, you know, you can still volunteer there, it's no big deal. You know, did you know that you can't get HIV from just hanging out with people or sharing drinks or anything like that? It's not, it's not like that. Um, so yeah, there has been a few negative reactions, but not like, not angry or just, it's just ignorance really. They just don't understand what it means and it makes them a little bit nervous at first. But once you explain, I, I find that people are generally pretty receptive to it, uh, especially Taiwanese with little kids because they'd like to bring their kids up to the center maybe. And so obviously their parental uh, concern kicks in and they think oh is it gonna be dangerous or risky for my kids but once you explain that it's not I find that they're really pretty good actually Harmony Home was originally set up um, by Nicole Yang uh, because her a friend of hers had uh, was diagnosed HIV positive and uh, that was I think in 96 so um, just the usual uh, preconceived notions about HIV that it's um, like sometimes that it's a gay disease or that it's dirty or that you must have been promiscuous or, or sharing needles to contract it and so that kind of attitude um, meant that uh, it was very difficult for HIV um, diagnosed people back then and still is now but it's changing um, so Harmony Home was set up around that idea um, but they've, it's actually the numbers of HIV um, affected people in there is much smaller than it was in the beginning. Um, but they're still very, very involved with the cause. They're really um, uh, at Gay Pride. They have lots of information and leaflets. Uh, they have they do seminars as well, um, just educating people more about the disease, like how you can contract it, and that you're not going to get it from just going up to uh, play with the kids or change diapers. You know, it's not it's they they want to help people to understand that it's it's not that easily contracted, and that it, just because you have it doesn't mean that you know you got it from sharing needles or something like that. Um, so I think it's really important. Uh, I'm not sure what the numbers are like in Taiwan, but I have heard that it's it's kept very quiet and that it is it is a problem here, but people don't like to talk about it. So I think it's really important um, to support somewhere like Harmony Home where uh, they know more about the disease, they know they know who it affects, and um, they're out there educating people and they're out there getting the the correct information out there, um, and they're yeah they're really focused on that too.